Nation, this is Amber Miller with the Virginia Tech Baseball Report. The Hokies went 1-2 and two with Georgia Tech this past weekend, shifting their ACC record to 7-8. and eight. Coach, you're now at the midweek point with the ACC season. What are your thoughts thus far? Oh, I, I think we've uh, we played pretty good on the weekend and, and, and left ourselves in a, in a good position conference-wise. We're right in the middle of the pack. We have an opportunity to play ourselves into the top third of the conference. And, um, I really like how we're taking the field every Friday and, and, and finishing it on, on Sunday. So um, I think there's a couple games that got away from us, but I, you know, you kind of step back and look at some of the games that we, we had and maybe had a chance to win, but I think we've also won a couple games that maybe we didn't think we had a chance to win. So I'm, I'm happy where we're at, and I know we can be better in the second half of the year. So. That makes me feel pretty confident about where we're headed. And referring more to individual accomplishments, Perez broke the record for career starts and for assisted plays. Eric Payne with his phenomenal hitting streak, and Caselica won ACC Pitcher of the Week for the second time. Now, as their head coach, how does it feel seeing your three key players be so successful? Yeah, it, th th those guys have been amazing. If you look at the middle of our order of Alex, um, Brendan, and, and Eric, it's as good as the middle of the order as there is in the conference and, and, and maybe in the country. I'm not so locked in on what other programs may or may, may or may not have in the middle of the order, but just based on what we've seen in our schedule and what we have moving forward, those three guys are as, as good as there is. And then the way Sean's been hitting, and we'll talk about his pitching in a minute, but the way he's been hitting too, that, that makes that really a, for, a formidable middle of the order. And that's what that's what good leaders do and upperclassmen when you have seniors who have played a lot of baseball games and are good kids who work hard uh, they, they tend to get rewarded near the end of their career because they just they believe in that process um, and then Sean on the mound has been as good as there is in, in, the, in the conference really as you said he got uh, recognized twice already as pitcher of the, of the week in the ACC which is a very difficult thing to, to do and uh, we feel really good starting every series off with him on the mound he's, he's been tremendous. Now going off of what you said about his pitching, you and Coach Werder made the decision to put McGarity as a reliever. What was the motive behind this? Well, I really just wanted to uh, put a little bit more experience and confidence in our bullpen. And that can change your mindset during the game. When, oh, yeah, sure. when you have a lead and you're wondering, you know, who's going to come in, you know, what, 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 what's our situation that particular day, it can put a little pressure on your offense to try to try to do too much offensively. But when we know that we have Aaron to now help the load with, with Luke, I think that can relax us offensively and defensively and, I, and, and just play a, a, a more complete game. So that was the motivation to do it. Uh, two years ago, uh, as the pitch coach here, we had a, a kind of a, a, a similar duo with with Clark Levitin and, and Jake Joyce, and those two just provided a really high comfort level for our team. As soon as that game got into the seventh, eighth, we felt really good that we were going to win the game, and uh, I think that paid dividends throughout the course of 56 games. You also showed a lot of shifts in the infield, such as moving Perez to short and Sam Fergale to second. You've always mentioned Sam Fergale's hard work ethic. What has he shown you to earn the spot? Yeah, even the other night we we were trailing late. And uh, it was a it was a tough tough game, but he just his motor never stops. It never stops, and uh, he he's unfortunately for for Sam he's he picked the wrong position uh, backing up a, a player such as Alex, where he, as you talked about he's 200 and something now consecutive uh, starts for Alex. So his his opportunity to play has been minimal, but. What I saw this week and what we saw a couple weeks ago when he when he played some midweek games is that he's he's ready he's ready and, he, and he'll do anything he can possibly do to help our team win and uh, you can never go wrong if you have uh, a kid of that high character and you, you're able to put him in the, the lineup you just you know he's going to give everything he could possibly give and and and, and help his teammates do the same so uh, very happy with how Sam uh, performed over the weekend and I think we'll we'll see a lot more of him as we move forward. Now, a few weeks ago, you mentioned hitting is contagious, and this seems to be a reoccurring theme with the Hokies. Who have been your offensive leaders these past few weeks? Um, 
it, it, it's starting to become a one through nine lineup. I mean, it, do, it definitely does start with Alex and Brendan and Eric uh, in the middle of the order. Uh, I think those guys, their presence provides uh, Sage and Raheem. Uh, it, it gets those guys a little bit better pitches to hit because uh, teams do not want to uh, put those uh, guys on with, with walks, so they're, they're getting better pitches to hit, so they're setting the table for the middle of our order. And then Andrew Mogg's been a very pleasant surprise offensively for us. He's had some big hits, especially with uh, a couple of his doubles with the bases loaded and because he's picked up some big RBIs for us. Um, and we've, we've, with Sam at the bottom of the order now, I think we got a little bit more offense out of that out of that nine hole than we've had at the beginning of the year. So, uh, and Mac had, had a great weekend. And the, the, the trick with Mac is you don't get too locked in on his batting average because it, it, it doesn't jump out at you. But his on base percentage is up a, about 400. And he's been hit by nine pitches and, and, and he's been walked eight times in his limited limited amount. So he's he and he drew a huge walk on Saturday to start that to keep that rally going to give Sean a chance to uh, move the runners and give. Andrew a chance to, to win the game on, on that walk off. So uh, all of, everyone seems to be contributing, but it definitely, in my opinion, starts with the presence of those three, four, and five hitters. Now moving into this weekend, Miami usually shapes up to be one of your tougher opponents. What's your mental approach going into the series? Well, really, our goal right now is to win Friday, and that will be our goal. Win or lose Friday, our goal will be to win Saturday when we wake up. That will be our, our goal. So. We just got to play the way we've been playing, and play as hard as we've been playing, and let the chips fall where where they will. Because I, I, as you know, and people who've been watching us this year, we're we're capable of beating anyone, and winning any series, and winning at any game, no matter what the score is. Um, so we just got to keep continue to show up and play the way we've been playing, and, and just keep faith that we we get rewarded for for sticking with the process. Well, safe travels this weekend. I hope to see you back with the series win. All right, thank you. I'm Amber Miller with the Virginia Tech Baseball Report. Until next time, Hokie Nation.